After generating millions of high quality leads for businesses across all different industries, different target audiences, different products and services, and at different stages that continue to produce and result in millions of dollars of sales online, this is the core process and part of the vital differentiator that you must have in order to turn those leads into lifelong customers. Now, when you want to have more leads to refer more people to you, to engage with your business, you must have this process in place. My name is Benson and today I'm gonna to be teaching you the five core marketing automations you must have in order to turn your leads, warm them up, and convert them into lifelong customers. At the end of this video, I'll be giving you the exact marketing automation plus email templates that you can just plug and play into your business and also an in-depth walkthrough on how you can implement this step by step. So don't be overwhelmed by this. Know that you're gonna get this at the end. And this is not only gonna increase your leads by thousands every single month, but I'm gonna be sharing with you how you can convert these quality leads into lifelong customers. But for now, let me walk you through the process of how this is going to work. Now, two core foundational principles that I wanna share with you to give you a universal overview and for you to really understand why we are doing these indoctrination and marketing automations and why I say that converting a lead is only the first step is we wanna focus on what I call the multitudinous cycles. The target audience, whatever stage that you're going at right now, is sophisticated, they're complex and they have so much noise that's happening in their life. They have so much people, competitors, running ads to them, doing all these different things. At the same time, their attention and their, their attention deficit is very, very high, and also they have lack of attention. Getting their focus, getting them to listen to what we have to say is very rare. So that's why if you take a look, this is what multitudinous cycles is. Now multitudinous cycles, you can see that there's made up of six different stages. What you need to know is that right now, if different industries have different stages of complexity. So what that means is that at the lowest stage, these are people that let's say it's a brand new product. It doesn't take a lot of marketing and effort to be able to get them to pay attention to it because it is something that they have seen or have had the awareness of. Now most industries, especially the yours like fitness space or whatever space that you're in, SaaS, or consulting or marketing especially, you are usually at a stage between five and six. This is where the audience attention is extremely low and you want to focus on using very solid touch points and very solid messaging and branding and especially the sequences that I'm about to share with you to be able to communicate and demonstrate that you can help them, that you can build the trust and the relationship with them. And stage five and stage six, you can see that at the top, you need nine to 12 cycles between the two different stages. When I mean cycles, you can imagine those as touch points, experiences with your business and your brand through your website. So that's what multitude of cycles is. You want to understand is that as sophisticated, as complex as the target audience is, is the first variable. The second variable is as new or old as the product that you have or the service. Between these two variables, it requires either more cycles or less cycles to be able to get the attention of our target audience. Now, the next principle that ties into the multitudinous cycles is called the audience trifecta. Now, this is one of the most important parts that you must know because at any point in time, one of the truths about business online or even offline is that you can never own 100% of a marketplace. You can never have a monopoly. That's why it's important for you to understand that each audience, whatever you're going for, there are different segments that you wanna target, and each segment, we wanna to speak to them differently, which is why it ties into the audience trifecta. Now, on the audience trifecta, there's five core stages that we're looking at. The first one is the lower 90%. Let's start with that. At the bottom, you can see there's the red. These are people that are not interested in your company. So that means they're either not interested because there's a segment of the market that they just don't fit with your brand. And basically these people are never gonna choose you. They may be using the competition already. They may have a complimentary product or service from another solution to solve a problem or achieve the results that they have. They may have had a bad experience with your business. They may use an alternative options, but don't sweat it, right? Don't focus on these people. Just recognize that this dynamic exists in the marketplace for your target audience. You can't have 100% and the majority of about 30% of the people, you can't be all things to all people. That's why these 30% will not buy from you. Now the next 30% is what I call people that are at the connect stage. So these are people that do not know they have a need. This segment of the market, they do not have a need for the product or service at this time. 
and they're not perceptive to any of the marketing messages that we're sending them. They may have just made a purchase. They may be either too small. They may not have the budget. They may not have the time. They may not be ready for the product or the service. They might have a lot of different challenges that they have to overcome. And this is the connect stage where we want to focus on connecting them to the business as much as we can so that when time comes that they're ready to invest or buy a product or service and we've added enough value and trust and cultivated a relationship, then they can move into the next stage. Now the next stage is called the cultivation stage. Now this one is another 25 to 30% and we're still at the lower 90%. So you can see that this is make up the bulk of the market. These are people that are cultivating stage where they have a need, but it isn't enough for them to act right now. This group is not buying. They may look like and act like they want to, but they won't make the commitment. They have other priorities and until that need becomes more pressing, then they won't make a purchase. And at the same time, they don't have the values that have been established. They haven't received much value from the business. They haven't understood more about you, what you can do for them, and they need more cultivation, which is why this is at the cultivate stage. You wanna be able to add more value, cultivate that relationship. Now the next one, as we move to the top 10%, the next one is called the passive stage. Now the passive stage is people that know they have a need, but they aren't proactively searching for options. That's why it's called the passive stage. These are people that need to be value indoctrinated by you and where you create more value from them. They know they have some kind of shift that's happening in their life and they wanna be able to change it. That's the seven to 10%. The next one, which is at the top, are what I call the active stage. Now the active stage at the very pinnacle are active buyers. These are people that have a need, they're actively looking for a solution, and they wanna make a purchase in the next 30 days to 90 days. So they're actively looking to buy. It's just a matter of which one fits their needs. Do they resonate with the business? Do they resonate with the values that the business represents? That's the most important thing. So you can see what's interesting about these audience perfecta stages is that most of the people that you're reaching for is falling between the seven to ten percent passive stage all the way to the 25 to 30 percent connect stage and in between these two stages it comprises of more than 60 percent of the marketplace and that is why when we convert them into a lead a lead is not enough this whole middle process that we are about to learn and implement for your business is how do we cultivate everyone that's at the 60% stage and turn them into the active stage so that when they're ready to buy, when they're ready to invest their hard-earned money, they invest it with you and not their competitors. Now, why marketing automation and emails is so important is that we're starting the communication with your target audience. Once they've been able to convert into a lead, we're starting to communicate with them when we wanna warm them up. So this is one of the most important stages. Now, the first automation that we wanna incorporate is what I call the welcome automation. So what we want to do here is we want to introduce them to your business, to your brand. What is the first story of how you were founded? What are the values that you stand for? So in the first email, what we want to do is we want to thank them for opting in for the main asset. That's the first email that goes out to them. We tell them about more about why we're thanking them, what they can expect, and then the results that they can come to achieve through being in contact with us, with you and your business and the brand. The next email we want to focus on is what is the origin story? What does your business stand for? We want to build that resonance, that connection with your target audience to understand that we have the same goals, the same achievements, the same values as they are so that we can have that resonance. That's the second email. The third email we want to focus on is talking about how can we help them achieve the results that they want in their life and how can we help them overcome the challenges and struggles and the pain points as well. So that's the third email. I want to demonstrate that, and not by selling a product at this stage, but we want to just use a video or use text to be able to bridge that connection. We want to show them how we can help them. That's the most important thing. Just focus on adding value in the welcome automation. Fourth one we want to focus on is we want to share with them testimonials, videos ideally, or even written ones, of your past customers and clients that have had great success with your products and services. Now, we're not trying to get them to order or buy at this stage, we're not converting them. We're focusing on just showing and bridging that your community of people is just like who they are before. That's one of the key things that I just said. It's one of the most important parts that you wanna pay attention to. Where your target audience is at right now before, we wanna show them what it's like after without being pushy or salesy. You wanna give them more assets, you wanna add more value, you can show them more videos, you can show them more content, you can show them more guides, whatever asset that you have, give it to them, show them how I can help them achieve the results that they want. So that's a five email sequence that you can use 
in the welcome automation to be able to start adding value, building that trust in the relationship with them without expecting anything in return. The next automation indoctrination we wanna set up is called the value sequence. Now the value sequence is where we're constantly adding value to them, focusing on giving them the assets, let's say any creative posts that you have on your website, and also focusing on the videos or guides or eBooks. And we wanna set this up with a five to six email sequence where we focus specifically on adding value to them, asking for their feedback. That's the main goal here. We wanna make sure that we're helping them achieve the results they want and overcoming the problems that they have by adding them emails, giving them the value in those emails, being able to properly articulate to them, and also demonstrating that we know where they're at right now and how we can help them move into the next step. The next automation that we wanna incorporate is called the segmentation automation. Now, the reason why we wanna segment them and that's the beauty of marketing automation is that we're able to personalize the communication based on either their interest, based on the results that they want, based on the problems that they wanna overcome, or based on other variable factors like their age, or whatever categories that you wanna to use to be able to define this. Now what we would wanna do is we wanna segment them again. And we wanna do this based on the experience that they're having through this entire process. Are they having a great experience? Is the first segmentation. Are they having an all right experience? Or are they having a bad experience? Or you wanna to speak to them themselves. You wanna ask them critical questions to identify why is it a bad experience? Is it because of the disconnect with the product or service that you have? Is it because they're receiving too many emails? Identify the reason and start reducing that and doing less of that. And then overall for this entire process, you're optimizing it throughout as well. This is extremely powerful when you're able to optimize it and assess the experience of people that are going through your marketing automation. If people are going through bad experience, you want them to speak to someone like yourself or someone on your team to make it a great experience. For people that are saying they have a great experience and all right, and we're able to assess and identify why they have it, what we wanna do next is we wanna personalize the communication even more so that we can add more value to them. So you wanna make sure you set up four to five emails again that's delivered every two, three days or a weekly basis, depending on the frequency you wanna set. Ideally, even for myself, through the bensonson.com website and Digital Market University, I deliver emails that are two to three days dependent on that because that's what my audience has told me that they enjoy. They enjoy it in two to three days, they're getting value, they're implementing, they're getting results, and they get implemented the next and the next one. It might be different for your audience, but usually two to three days in a week per an email is the sweet spot that you should be doing. You don't wanna be overwhelming them because as you can imagine, even you right now, you're probably receiving hundreds of emails in a weekly basis, You know, special promos, all these different things that are spamming almost. So you wanna make sure you're not spamming them, especially when they just opt into your list. Now the next marketing automation we're gonna set up is the focus on the 60% that I talked about in the audience trifecta. And for people that don't convert or they don't respond and they're not active within our marketing automation, meaning that they're not engaging with the content, we wanna make sure that there's one main automation in place and that's what I call the long-term engagement automation. So this one is dedicated to just keeping in contact with the people that are not engaging. So we wanna make sure that this is gonna be people that opt into the list, whatever list they go on and all these sequences are all separate but this is also a separate one that's gonna be delivering emails on a weekly basis that's just gonna keep them up to date on what's happening. And it's not a newsletter. You wanna make sure that the email is short, concise, and it's giving them value. Now, for example, on bensonson.com, the way that I indoctrinate people and I use a long-term engagement is that every single week, I send them an episode of Behind the Success where they're able to see basically how I'm growing companies all around the world using behind the scenes stuff, meetings, team trainings, having phone calls, strategies, how I think, all these different things. It's almost like a video vlog that I deliver on a weekly basis. Another way that I use it is called Breakthroughs with Benson, which is a Q&A show where I answer the questions from people that send in and from across the web on things related to business, entrepreneurship, and digital marketing. So I send these people, send these things, emails on a weekly basis. That's basically just to add value so they can see what's happening. And it's one specific short email that's just to the point and be able to just get them to watch if they're not interested. If they're interested, then click and watch and just keep in contact with them. That's the most important thing about this is that it's a long-term engagement automation. So whether regardless if they're buying or they're not buying, they're not interested or they're active or inactive, they're seeing what's happening with you behind the scenes. Now, if you don't have a show and you don't have all these videos that you can record, you can just send the specific short emails every time that just talk about you know, what's happening in your business, what's happening in your life. Keep it more personal. That's really the most important thing. You wanna make sure it's short, concise, and personal so you can build that relationship over time. 
because the one that keeps in contact with them, the one that has the most touch points, ultimately has the most successful business in the end. Now here's a bonus automation that you can set up which is a little bit more advanced. But what you wanna do is you wanna be able to set up tracking on your site. So when someone goes on your website, if they go on let's say a product page or a service page or a strategy session page or maybe your bio page and they already opted into your list, what you can do using Active Campaign is you're able to actually send them a personalized email based on the page and the website engagement that's happening throughout the process. As usual with these specific videos I'm sharing with you in Digital Marketing University, I wanna always over deliver. So three core points for you to know about and these are core things that are gonna make or break this marketing automation process and warming up the leads and turn them into lifelong customers. The whole goal of an email is to get them to click through and go onto a website and go onto a page that indoctrinate them so they can consume more information or watch a video. The whole goal of the email is getting them to take that action. So starting from the subject line, what we wanna to do to get them to open that email is to be able to build more curiosity. So what you wanna do is you wanna use more curiosity in your subject lines. You wanna do unfinished sentences, you wanna leave with a question, or you wanna build an interesting or shocking statement about whatever it is that you're trying to get them to go on to a website. For example, here's an example of some of my emails. You can say, now, this isn't what you wanna achieve, is it? Dot, dot, dot or maybe include a question mark. Did you know that this is how you increase your traffic by 100 to 150% question mark? Now once they've opened the email, what we wanna do through the email is we want to get them to click through, to go onto a website page that you have to watch a video or engage with a piece of content or buy a product or go on the shopping cart page. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that everything in the email that's shown builds curiosity, is short to the point, and we also wanna be able to get them to click through. One of the ways you can do this, I found converts extremely high, regardless of the industry that you're in, is using a GIF in the center. So we have short primer intro sentences here, build curiosity, use some very good statements, add value, and then we have a GIF in the center of a video or something, and then you go into the end where there's a call to action to get them to click and go onto the page. That's the whole purpose of the email. You do not wanna use an email to educate someone on something. You wanna do it as a short curiosity build to click and land on a page. Sure, sometimes you can have some summary points on an email, keep it very short and to the point, but the most important purpose of an email is to get them to click and go onto a website page to engage with whatever content that you have or have them buy whatever product or service or maybe have them book something with you. So that's the most important. That's how you increase the click-through rate, the open rate of your emails, is to build more curiosity in the subject line and add more curiosity and compelling copy into your emails. And don't be overwhelmed because I'm gonna give you the exact email templates and also at the same time, some copy formulas that you can use for emails at the end of this video. Now, one of the questions that I get most often when people watch this video on marketing automations is they tell me, Benson, these five, six automations, they seem like they take a lot of time to be able to implement. Other than the fact that I'm gonna give you the exact marketing automation templates at the end of the video, that's a very valid point. At the same time, they also say, Benson, I don't wanna be sending five to six emails every day because all these sequences seem like they have multiple different emails. So if they join my list, am I sending five to six emails a day? Here's what you need to get is that one of the main things is that they start from the top, from the welcome sequence, they receive the five to six emails based on your story, your brand. Then they go into the value sequence where they receive emails focused on getting the main assets that you have to help them solve a problem or achieve the result that they want. Then we go to the next one where we actually segment and understand what are their interests, what are the results that they want, what are the problems, and other main categories on how we can segment your target audience. And then we can personalize that communication through the personalized value sequence, giving them assets, giving them communication that's focused on just the categories that they're interested in and what they wanna learn more about. And then we focus on segmenting their experience. Are they having a great experience? Are they having an all right or a bad experience? So we wanna make sure that we're segmenting them based on that pathway. And then we focus on the ones that aren't engaging, they go into long-term engagement. So what we're actually doing is it's a bridge that's connected overall. It's not something that's happening all at the same time. We're connecting them, they move through, so they're only gonna be receiving a few emails every single week not a ton of emails. You wanna make sure that's the most important thing you understand is that it's clear that they're receiving only a few emails every week and it's not multiple different emails at the same time. Now the next thing you wanna do if you wanna get more inspiration on how you can set up the emails and the marketing automation sequences is you can do two to three things. The first thing you can do is you can go on your competitors' websites, you opt into their email list, you opt in and you'll be able to see what are the emails they're sending you. 
how are they communicating with you? How are they adding value to you? How are they trying to sell you? And how are they trying to warm you up as a lead in their marketing automation platform? That's the first thing. The second thing you can do is you can actually look at complimentary websites, other websites that you've already bought from, you've taken your money out of your wallet, or you're taking your credit card, you've invested money with them. It doesn't have to be the industry or space that you're in. It doesn't have to be a product or service that you sell. It can just be complimentary websites that already are having a system and you already bought from them before. You opt in and you see how they got you to buy. What was the cycle that you went through? Reverse engineer your process and how you thought going through that entire journey and then be able to understand what made you buy. What made you trust this business to be able to invest your hard earned money? That's the second day. The third thing you can do is you can go on Digital Marketing University on the bensonson.com website, my website, and be able to opt in and see how I'm using this process in place right now through the welcome, through the value, through the segmentation, through the experience, and through the long-term engagement as well. How am I doing it? And because how is it working really well for me as well? You wanna understand why and see these three different places to get inspiration for your own as you're building it out as well. Now can you see how important it is to have these five marketing automations in place to warm up the lead and turn them into a lifelong customer? You can't do that if you just focus on converting them to a lead and then they don't see anything else after that. This whole process that we went through is how we're gonna turn them into a lifelong customer, how we're gonna warm them up, how we're gonna get them to refer their friends and family to your business is by adding value to them and then being able to warm them up and build that relationship and that trust. This whole personalized communication that you have with them, this whole segmentation that we're doing is how we're going to build that and shorten the amount of time that it takes for them to convert into a customer and ultimately have them warmed up so that they're able to learn more about the business and have become a raving fan even if they do not buy from you They'll recommend other people to you as well. Finally, now you know how to warm up your leads and turn them into lifelong customers. It isn't enough to be able to just convert them. You now know the sequence, the process in the middle, the bridge that you must architect and build out to be able to have them turn into lifelong customers, raving fans, and constantly refer people to you. Now, as promised, uh, you're gonna be getting the exact marketing automation frameworks, the emails to be able to plug and play into your business, and also an in-depth walkthrough of everything you just watched in this video step-by-step step, on how you can implement this for your business. Doesn't matter what industry you're in, the product or service that you sell, this will work for you, and you must have this in place. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to comment below right now, comment below and let me know what industry or business you're in or what is your website, and I'll share with you my feedback on what is the most important automations that you should have in place. Not in detail, but I'll give you some key points that you should be aware of for your target audience. Or if you have a question from watching this video, comment below and I'll get back to you. The next thing I wanna want you to do is I want you to hit like on this video. Let me know that you like this piece of content, that you're finding it very engaging, you're getting value from it, so we can keep making these videos for you so you can learn how to start and grow any business online, specifically yours. The next thing I want you to do, you can see my face right there in the circle, I want you to hit subscribe. Subscribe to the channel so you can get weekly videos on everything you need to know to start and grow a business online. And then all at the same time, whatever it is, traffic, leads, sales, you're gonna learn all those as well. Now before I end the video, I wanna say you can go onto the link here to be able to see the expanded post. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.